A turbulent time characterized by infights and wrangles, the Law Society of Kenya now has a new president. We speak to the LSK president elect Eric Deuru, who is with us in studio. Eric, good evening, Wakili. Thank you for making time for us tonight on TV 47. Good evening, and thank you, Abu, for inviting me. All right, uh, Wakili, in an election held on Thursday, you defeated four candidates, garnering 1,811 votes, becoming the, fifth, the 50th uh, president-elect now of the Law Society of Kenya. First, paint for us a picture of the Law Society of Kenya that you are becoming its president as it is of now. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, of course, it is within uh, public realm that uh, I take over the leadership of the Law Society at a time when we've had a tumultuous period in the office, mm -hmm. but also at a time when uh, the law society has uh, raised its profile in terms of uh, the defense of the rule of law and the administration of justice. Mm -hmm. And so we, we come in uh, against this uh, backdrop. And so our mission as it is in office is to ensure that uh, we are able to build on the successes mm -hmm. that we've had and also address some of the challenges uh, that we have faced so that uh, we can uh, uh, turn a tide, a new, a new leaf in uh, the management of the affairs of the law society. Fair enough. And Wakili, in your acceptance speech, you said, and I quote, I know we have had a tumultuous period in the society, and I believe it's now to say that that past is behind us. That past, many would say, has been characterized by infights, wrangles, and disunity. How troubling will that be for you, if at all it is? Well, uh... I mean, that means that uh, the work uh, is cut out for myself and uh, the council that has just been elected. Mm -hmm. But I have no doubt that we have the wherewithal to be able to handle uh, the challenges that uh, the Law Society has faced. Mm -hmm. I have been a chair of uh, the Nairobi branch, which is uh, ideally the largest branch of the Law Society, composing about 75% to 80% of the membership of the Law Society. Mm -hmm. And we've managed to, to steer the society in times of COVID and in terms of uh, severe financial crunch. And I've also uh, served in uh, the Council of the Law Society of Kenya. So I'm not returning uh, to new territory. I'm going to ter a territory that I am well versed in. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, my years uh, of service at the council and my years and experience at the Nairobi branch then places me at a very unique uh, or pos position to be able to address uh, the challenges that we face. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm also uh, 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 cautiously optimistic mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the members of the council have heard the hue and cry of the membership for a united uh, society, a society that focuses on the membership interests, mm -hmm. and a society that uh, robustly uh, uh, champions and defends the rule of law. And, and, and so whereas uh, we, we have that history, mm -hmm. but uh, if for anything it should be a lesson as to what we should never uh, go back to as a society. Uh, Wakili, you bring the issue of unity and it is quite a number uh, of times talked about uh, in the law society of, uh, of Kenya and the lack of unity for that matter. First, for an observer, probably an outsider who is not uh, privy to how the law society functions, where does disunity arise from? You know, uh, when uh, there is disunity mm -hmm. in the leadership, uh, then you find that uh, the membership mm -hmm. uh, tend to take different positions on different issues depending on which leader they support. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and, and you know, at a time when we had two factions of the council, then it became extremely difficult to even uh, speak and say uh, and have an opinion on anything because it would be attributed to one faction of the council mm -hmm. or the other. 
and uh, and it will be seen as if you're supporting either side mm -hmm. even when you want you know to take a position hopefully with a view to to, to sort out uh, uh, the mess that we, we found ourselves in and and, and, and so uh, that, that I think is what leads to this clarion call for unity mm -hmm. because uh, ideally the law society should be speaking with one voice a united strong voice of course that does not mean that there would be uh, there wouldn't be uh, uh, dissenting voices, uh, I mean, they, they, they should be, because this is a, a democracy and people are entitled to have their opinions. But it is also a matter in which uh, those opinions are uh, expressed. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, that the minority will have their say, mm -hmm. but the majority will have their way. Fair enough. And Wakili, it's not uh, gloom for the exiting council, isn't it? Uh, they're quite credited for their tough stance. Uh, in demanding the implementation of court orders and the compliance for that. Just perhaps as a reflective note, what do you think will be the legacy of the exiting council? And especially it said. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, uh, the Nelson-led, the nelson Harvey led uh, council will be remembered for the stand that it took mm -hmm. on several matters on uh, public interest. Mm -hmm. You all remember the famous uh, 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 petition for dissolution of parliament, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, several cases that were filed, especially one that sought to declare advocates as essential service providers. Mm -hmm. So there's been a, a number of, uh, of, of court cases uh, significant uh, decisions that mm -hmm. have uh, uh, that the law society has been uh, party to, and, uh, and and just really the tough uh, and uncompromising stand that uh, uh, the admin the Nelson Harvey administration took on uh, several issues with regard to the public interest. Tough and uncompromising, you say, Wakili. Some would say it was too radical, was it? Ah, well, the jury is out there, and it is not in my place to, 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 make, that, uh, to make that judgment. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I think, for me, I, I take that as a positive, as a, as, as, as a legacy, and, and it is one which we do not, it's a ball which we do not intend to drop. Perhaps just the matter of expressing uh, ourselves is, uh, you know, where you might uh, find a slight difference, and this really is just a matter of style. All right, and talking of uh, Harvey, because I want us to move from that, Wakili, uh, he traded on a brave new bar. How brave will Theory's bar be? Well, the law society under my leadership would be, should I use the word sober? Mm -hmm. It will be politically neutral. Mm -hmm. It will be firm and it will be robust when it comes to the defense of the public interest. Mm -hmm. It will focus on alleviating the bottlenecks uh, that uh, face the membership in terms of uh, the practice environment. Mm -hmm. And it will also focus on its other extremely important role of ensuring that uh, uh, it is able mm -hmm. to respond to the challenges that the advocates face in their day-to-day -day life, be it in the practice environment, mm -hmm. or be it on matters relating to welfare, which uh, is, is a mandate that the Law Society exercises through the branches. And so we expect that there will be a much more a stronger collaborative uh, uh, sort of style of leadership between the national office and the branches to ensure that all aspects are taken care of mm -hmm. even as we pursue our other greater mandate which is to be to advise the government on ma on all matters relating to law and the administration of justice uh, you talk of political neutrality wakili given that this is an election year and given that the assumption or the co um, misconception perhaps by some who termed the LSK the departing one now, and its council as politically sided. You are assuring the members and Kenyans at large that this new bar will be a political. 
indeed indeed and and, and the law society at all times uh stands to be apolitical mm -hmm. and, and and let me say this mm -hmm. any law society that discharges its mandate and discharges its mandate faithfully mm -hmm. will always be viewed as an anti-government uh, uh, establishment mm -hmm. uh, because uh, ideally it is the government that controls uh, the instruments of power mm -hmm. and force and so uh, it is the government often which would be on the side of the excesses mm -hmm. and the law society would be on the other side checking those excesses. Mm -hmm. But be that, say, uh, uh, be that as it may, mm -hmm. it is in the nature in which you adopt the interventions and how you respond to those excesses mm -hmm. that then would, uh, would uh, reveal your neutrality in terms of how you then respond mm -hmm. to the to the government excesses but wakili is there often a binary of uh, keeping the government in check and as some say sidelining with the government if one wants to it's 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 a it's a it's a balancing act mm -hmm. really it's 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 a balancing act and i think anyone in leadership uh, ought to have the different skills uh, that are necessary mm -hmm. to deal with the challenge that is before them. Mm -hmm. They are challenges that may not necessarily uh, require uh, 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 a less diplomatic approach. There are others which would, uh, you know, require a diplomatic approach. And so I, I think as a leadership, you ought to have uh, uh, that skill set and to be able to uh, be able to make the decision in the best interest of uh, the society uh -huh. which 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 skill you need to to use to address which particular challenge and if you were to paint a picture Wakili, of your relation with the government you are elect now i suppose you'll be taking office and the council will assume office in the 25th of march yes. uh, what will your relationship be with the government I don't think the law society is in the business of uh, having a relationship with the government. A working uh, relationship? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, ideally, what we want to, to do mm -hmm. is with regard to parliament, we want to take a more proactive uh, approach in terms of uh, the kind of legislations that are going to come out of parliament uh -huh. so that we participate much more meaningfully during uh, uh, the uh, stages of uh, development of any legislation as opposed to where we are, where we tend to be slightly more reactionary uh, when legislation has come out to challenge it. So we would want to uh, uh, ensure that the law society plays a much more significant role mm -hmm. in terms of how it intervenes. Mm -hmm. We want to also to ensure that the law society plays a much more important role in terms of what we call strategic public interest litigation. Mm -hmm. uh, that is litigation that is intended to change government policy or influence uh, government policy. So that's an area which we hope that uh, we are also going to be extremely uh, robust. Mm -hmm. uh, we also will be following keenly uh, the allocations that are given to the judiciary to ensure that we are able to lobby for an increase in the allocation given to, to the judiciary for purposes of ensuring that uh, the other third arm of government does not uh, uh, suffer from uh, you know, the ongoing budgetary cuts that we have witnessed in the last uh, uh, 10 years uh -huh. of, uh, of this administration, which has had really catastrophic effects on uh, the administration of, uh, of justice. So those are a few of the areas in which you will, we will find that uh, there will be intense, uh, intense consultations and intense uh, lobbying to ensure that we are able then to influence uh, government policy and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and, the law, and the laws that come out of parliament. But uh, 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 whenever then the government w uh, would, it would require us to go to court, then we would go to court. If it would require us to go to the streets and, and make a protest, then we will do that. But uh, I mean, we will be engaging on, on, on such a full plate. All right, uh, Wakili, let's talk of uh, the issue of quacks in the profession. How do you intend to deal with that? 
Quarks in the profession is, uh, is, is now something that is becoming a menace. And uh, I intend to make this an agenda at uh, the NCAJ mm -hmm. so that then we can take a more uh, uh, collaborative approach to dealing with this. The, 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 the challenge you have noticed comes to uh, enforcement and trying to arrest these quarks and ensure that uh, they are prosecuted. So that is uh, something that we need to work with the, with the police mm -hmm. for a more collaborative approach so that they can help us to, to, to root out uh, 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 this uh, 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 trend that is uh, now growing at uh, alarming levels. All right, Wakili, earlier on I was listening to a debate at Daystar University which brought together uh, the contenders for this year's LSK uh, leadership. Uh, in your response, when you asked of your weakness, you said, and I quote, to build consensus, and quite often I'm a soft-spoken person. Uh, soft-spoken, what are the dangers of the conflation of being a soft-spoken and the view of softness? Well, you know, a more, a more, a more, a more radical person would want to say that, uh, you know, uh, the art of building consensus is uh, one where, you know, uh, uh, someone who's more radical in terms of how they approach issues mm -hmm. would deem it as, you know, quote-unquote, uh, fence-sitting. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think in a situation uh, where you, you are the president and you lead a council, it is important to listen to your council members mm -hmm. and to speak last. I, I, I mean, that's the leadership style that I have, so that I'm able to pick up the minds of, of uh, the, 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 the membership and uh, of the council, and, and, and then be able to make you know, a more balanced uh, assessment of what each and everyone thinks, so that you're able then to, 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 to develop uh, that consensus. Mm -hmm. Uh, so so th th that really is uh, what other people may, may, may see as a weakness, but for me what I consider to be one of my strongest points. Uh, this other one about being soft-spoken, really. <laughs> uh, my predecessor is uh, also, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, a little bit soft-spoken too. Is, um, uh, is not really, you know, the kind of person who you would say is... Uh, you know, a hardliner. Mm -hmm. you, 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 I mean, you can tell from his actions that uh, he can really take firm positions, uh, despite the fact that uh, you know his voice is not uh, that extremely commanding. Uh, at a broader level, Wakili, and talking of the judiciary, apart from the budgetary cuts, let me get your thoughts in as far as the tenure of uh, Chief Justice Martha Koome is concerned. Uh, the, the jury on uh, the current Chief Justice uh, is still out there. I think uh, uh, in certain instances she has acquitted herself uh, extremely well. Uh, there might be instances where uh, uh, there might be uh, you know, a perception that perhaps there are certain decisions which she shouldn't have uh, uh, have taken, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, uh, uh, and, and 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 you remember, I think the the chief justice unfortunately got into office against a backdrop of being perceived to be a little bit too cozy mm -hmm. uh, with the with the government, and uh, you know everything then is interpreted against that lens. So uh, I would want to say that uh, we've had extremely uh, fruitful. Uh, uh, engagements with the, with the, with, the, with the current uh, chief justice on on matters of practice and uh, uh, within the Nairobi branch, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm hoping that uh, we can be able uh, now that uh, I'm, I've taken over, I'll be taking over the helm of the law society, to continue with that engagement and of course at all times in the event that uh, we notice or we feel that the chief uh, justice is cozy mm -hmm. to the executive we will then call out that uh, type of coziness because I think there ought to be an element of equality of arms in terms of how they engage, but one that does not compromise uh, the independence of uh, the judiciary. 
All right, uh, Wakili, that's where we'll have uh, to end this discussion. Thank you for your time tonight on TV47. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is the first actually media interview post the win, isn't it? Yes, yeah. oh yes, indeed. <laughs> and we, we, we really appreciate for making time for Kenya's fastest growing television. Now we are speaking to the incoming uh, Law Society of Kenya president, who is electors of now taking office from the 25th of March 2022, Eric Deuri. Well, time for us to take a short break. Stay with us. We still have a lot lined up for you.